Welcome into the original Gangsters podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein, um, and we're going to hit a, a, a lightning rod of a topic right now, a hot button issue that's been percolating online for, for a little bit, uh, definitely more recently. Uh, we're going to talk about Michael Francis, who I just want to, you know, get off, uh, you know, get off my chest right off the bat. I, I got nothing but respect for this guy. Uh, he is literally a genius, um, both in what he did as a wise guy and what he's been able to do um, in his in his legitimate business over the last thirty years. Um, he, he, you know, th- this idea of uh, you know people branding themselves. And, and making themselves a brand that's kind of been more, you know, in, in the, uh, the the influencer social media era. Mike Francis, like he invented the blueprint for this in the '90s. So you know, he he is a real visionary and a pioneer. Uh, and there's a lot of debate about whether or not uh, he cooperated or what his cooperation can be categorized as. Uh, you know, is he a rat? Is he a snitch? Is he a, a cooperator? Um, again, I, I, that's neither here nor there. I'm not. I'm not into editorializing. I'm just going to give you the straight facts. And, and Norby Walters, a incredibly powerful, prominent, and popular uh, music agent, uh, power broker in the entertainment industry, he passed away this week at age 92. And back in 1989, he was on trial for racketeering related to a sports agency that he opened up. Um, and I'm going to give you a little backstory on him in a quick second. And Michael Francis was the star witness at that trial. And Norby Walters was initially convicted, uh, sentenced to, I believe, 10 years in prison, and then never did any of the time. The, uh, the case was thrown out. His conviction was thrown out. Uh, and he went about his life, returned to, to the, the case was out of Chicago, uh, returned to his life in Hollywood and, and you know, was was brought right back in with with open arms uh, over the last two and a half, three decades. He's been holding a pretty um, swanky Oscar viewing party in Beverly Hills. that's gotten a lot of attention from the tabloids. Um, but he is without question, it's not a deb- it's not really debatable. These are facts. Uh, during his business career, starting back in, in the 60s, uh, maybe even in the late 50s, uh, in the New York nightclub restaurant scene, uh, he was under the protection of Sonny Francis, the legendary underboss of the Colombo crime family, and Michael Francis's dad and mentor. Uh, and he was paying tribute uh, from his nightclub businesses and his restaurants, his lounges. Uh, Sonny Francis went to prison in the late 60s, early 1970s. And according to testimony and FBI uh, documents, records, court filings, Norby Walters continued to pay tribute to the Francis crew through Michael. Um, and then at some point, uh, he goes to LA and becomes the number one music agent, booking agent for all of the biggest R and B disco funk and soul acts of the seventies and eighties. I mean, it's just a, a list of hall of famers, uh, the Commodores, Marvin Gaye, uh, cool in the gang, Gloria Gaynor. Uh, Dion Warwick, Luther Vandross, uh, New Edition, the Jackson Five. There was just, you know, uh, he represented them all. Uh, and according to Michael Francis and, and his testimony, uh, the, the Colombo saw a piece of that business. Uh, and that, that piece of that business grew as the business grew. Uh, there was a, a incident, an anecdote that comes up in a, a FBI um file record document and, and Michael Francis also testified to this that after Sonny Francis got out of prison in 1979 he had it had been a long time battle with the government over uh you know multitude of things but at the end they nailed him on a very questionable uh, bank robbing conspiracy 
Um, and then that's really what jammed him up until the end of his life, kept on getting violated and going back to prison and into his, you know, <laughs> he was in his 90s and 100, died at 103 a couple years ago, a true OG. And it defines the term OG. You look up OG in the dictionary, Sonny Francis's faces is staring right back at, at you. So he gets out of prison um, in 1979, and he calls Norby Walters to a meeting. By this point, Norby Walters had become a really big deal in the music industry. And Francis and the Columbos were seeing a piece of this, but it all changed in 1979 when, when Francis got out of prison and he he gets Sonny or he gets Nor Norby Walters uh at a meeting and, and Sonny Francis says, Yo, all right, uh all the kind of nickel and diming is now a thing of the past. I'm in for 50%. I got half of your business. Uh, and that continued through the 80s. When he got into trouble, uh, and this is where uh Michael Francis's testimony comes into play. Norby Walters had, had, had found such success in the music industry, he decides that he wants to uh, throw his hat into the world of, of sports agenting. And in 1985, opens up a sports agency uh, in, a, in a shady move. I don't know how illegal it was, but in a shady move, he go in, in throughout the 84, 85 uh, college uh, athletic season football and basketball uh him and a partner of his go and they they sign up like 60 um college athletes that have pro potential um and this is totally illegal in the in the eyes of the ncaa it, it's a huge violation uh in terms of uh you know college athletics but in in the world of uh the justice system it, it falls in some gray areas and um with within those contracts that he's signing these kids to he's giving them cash advances and cars and trips uh jewelry at the end of the day he didn't turn out to be able to close on those deals and like 58 of the 60 people that he had signed up ended up going with other agents once they turned pro but a lot of money had been uh put out and norby walters got in trouble by trying to collect uh, that money to, to some of these now pro at that point, pro athletes uh, that had taken money from him as amateurs. Um, there was racketeering uh, as well as uh, mail fraud and wire fraud charges that he got hit with. Francis gets nailed. Uh, Michael Francis gets nailed in, in the end of 85 uh, in a racketeering money laundering uh, extortion, you know, all tied to uh, you know, again, various rackets. But if that the center of it was that you know classic, uh, you know brilliant you know, uh, bootleg gas scam, and he wants to leave the life, and he doesn't have to testify against his father or any of the Persicos or any of the Colombo bosses, but he had to testify against Norby Walters. He takes the stand in 1989. Um, he admits to not so much with the sports agency, but when he's given backstory, he admitted to, uh, you know, muscling a lot of famous musical acts uh, in order for them to stay, keep their business with Norby. He mentioned specifically um, the Jackson five, Dion Warwick, new edition. Uh, I think with the new edition guys, uh, they wanted to leave uh, Norby and Michael Francis steps in and says, Oh, you know, that, uh, you know, that $30,000 loan that Norby gave you, well, 20 of that is mine and you ain't going anywhere. <laughs> and another situation, he goes to the Jackson 5 uh, manager with, with some guys with him, including his best friend at the time, Champagne Larry uh, Carroza, who ends up getting killed, uh, issues with drugs and, and Francis's sister. Uh, and they tell the Jackson 5 owner that, you know, or well, the Jackson Five manager that uh, you know that tour you're going on that you're trying to cut Norby off from. It, you ain't going on any tour unless Norby's and us, you know, by proxy, are are in for a piece of it. Uh, and then same thing with Dion Warwick's uh, representation, and this was all testified to at the 1989 trial. Uh, but Michael Francis now again, he he's a superstar. And, uh, you know, he, he's he's laid the foundation for all the stuff that's going on online right now and, and YouTube and branding. Uh, he, he's just uh, he's really the gold standard. So uh, I, 
I've got nothing but respect for the guy, but with Norby Walters passing, I thought I'd add some clarification to that whole situation. And that's, you know, the long and the short of it. Uh, for OG Pod, Scott Bernstein, 